Good evening. Good evening, everyone. And welcome to Warwick's annual commencement ceremony. For those of you who aren't standing, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation that will follow. We'll keep you exercising this evening. At this time, I'd like to invite Jennifer Tremont, a United States Air Force veteran, to come to the podium and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ms. Tremont is the proud mother. I've got a few things to say about you. <laughs> She's quick. She's the proud mother of one son, a member of Warwick's Veteran Military Association and Salute National Honor Society. Jennifer teaches stained glass courses in the community and for Warwick's Summer Scholars Program. So if any kids are out there, this is a great class. Jennifer will graduate with an AA in General Studies and will return to pursue a business degree at Warwick in the fall. Jennifer, thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ms. Tremont. And now I'd like to introduce Reverend Margaret Brack, Rector of the St. Albans Episcopal Church for the invocation. Good and loving creator, we gather to offer thanks for the completion of the degrees these students will be receiving from Warwick Community College. We are grateful that these students will go forward from the point, this point, enriched with what they have learned and experienced. This has been a time which may have been long for some and short for others, but has played a very important role in each of these students' lives. Please bless and guide these graduates as they reach this end and as they chart their next steps and new beginnings. May what they have learned by being here at Warwick allow them to go forward and pursue what their lives hold for them. Help these graduates to use all that they have learned to go forward and make the world a better place through the degrees they have earned, but also in the ways they interact, work, and live with others. We know for some the sacrifices they have made to be here have made this time of study difficult. We ask that now they can feel joy as they reach this goal for which they have strived. Finally, we are thankful for the faculty and administration who have helped these students along each of their individual paths. It is with their guidance that these graduating students have been able to continue on to their next steps in life. We ask all of this in the name of the one greater than us all. You may be seated, thank you. And thank you, Reverend. We're delighted to hold our commencement ceremony at the Wicomico Youth and Civic Center once again this evening. And I want to thank the staff of the Civic Center and the college staff led by Ms. Kamisha Handy and Dr. Deirdre Johnson for making this event a reality. <laughs> Graduates, Tonight is your night to celebrate your success and your accomplishment. So it's my distinct pleasure to introduce Warwick Community College Board of Trustee member, Marty Neat. Thank you, Dr. Hoy. Uh, I'm pleased to introduce our guest tonight from my left to, your, uh, to the right on stage. So if, if you would please stand when I introduce you. Uh, Chip Bertino, President of the Worcester County Commissioners and Liaison to the Warwick Board of Trustees. We have Delegate Charles Otto. We have Senator Mary Beth Carosa. We have Julie Giordano, uh, Wicomico County Executive and Liaison to Warwick's Board of Trustees. We had have Maryland Secretary of Housing and Community Development, Salisbury's own Jacob R. Day. You've all met 
Dr. Hoy, I think, at some point. Okay. And then from my right here, we have Dr. Kristen L. Mowry, Vice President of Al Academic Affairs. We have Dr. Brian Newton, Vice President for Enrollment Management and Student Services. We have Reverend Mar Margaret Brack, Rector at St. Albans Episcopal Church and Faith Lutheran Church. We have John Cannon, uh, President of the Wicomico County Council. We have Russell W. Blake, a member of the Board of Trustees for Worcester County. And we have Anna G. Newton, a member of the Board of Trustees from Worcester County. Congratulations to the class of 2023. Each of you, along with your family, share the achievement that has been recognized here this evening. It is now my pleasure to introduce your commencement speaker, Jacob R. Day, Secretary of Maryland Housing and Community Development. Prior to his nomination to lead the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development under Governor Wes Moore, Secretary Day served as the 28th mayor of Salisbury. Born and raised in Salisbury, he previously served as city council president. His tenure as mayor was marked by a resurgent downtown, including nearly $650 million in new construction, the establishment of two community centers, and the creation of a permanent supportive housing program to address chronic homelessness in this county. Secretary Day was previously worked, previously worked also for the Eastern Shore Land Conservancy, most recently as director of the Center for Towns, utilizing design planning and implementation assistance to establish vibrant, sustainable small cities and towns. He served as national president of the American Institute of Architectural Students and as editor-in-chief of CRIT, a journal of architecture. He was also elected as the 79th president of the Maryland Municipal League, representing Maryland's 157 municipalities and one of Maryland's representatives to the Chesapeake Bay, Pro Bay Program's Local Government Advisory Committee. As a major in the United States Army, Secretary Day is assigned to the Maryland National Guard as an Information Operations and Special Technical Operations Officer with the 110th Information Operations Battalion. He is a veteran of the global war on terrorism and was deployed in Somalia, Kenya, and Djibouti. Secretary Day earned a Master of Science in Nature, Society, and Environmental Policy from Oxford University. He also earned a Master of Urban Design from Carnegie Mellon University and a Bachelor of Science in Architecture from the University of Maryland. He is the proud father to two beautiful daughters, Lily and Olivia. Please welcome Sen uh, uh, Secretary Jacob Day. Well, good evening. Okay. Well, Marty, who, by the way, was the first person I went to before I decided to run for mayor and ask permission if I was allowed to do that, Marty almost just made me a senator. And uh, I want to be clear to Senator Mautz and uh, Senator Carroza, who are in the room tonight, I'm not running for Senate. So don't, don't you worry. Not that you would be worried. Oh, okay, all right. Well, I don't want that job either. Well, good evening, Warwick Community College graduates. It's, so, it's such an honor to be here with you tonight, to be in my hometown and to be in this building where I experienced my own high school graduation, my prom, eight City of Salisbury Holiday Award banquets, Fernando Guerrero's HBO boxing debut, a monster truck rally, and maybe a few Harlem Globetrotters games. It's an honor and a comfort to be here with you. I'm struck by this moment in the history of Warwick because I get to share a stage with the tenacious and focused leader who has left his indelible mark on this institution. The gentleman, the leader, the visionary, your president for the last 23 years, Dr. Ray Hoy.
23 years ago, as I was graduating high school in this very room, Dr. Ray Hoy was becoming only the second leader of this institution. A dream without a classroom became a vision in a cornfield. And rather than stopping there, it's grown into a beautiful and proud cornerstone of our community. I think it's worth taking a moment of tonight to celebrate those 23 years of dedication, transformation, and class. So bravo, Dr. Hoy. So, I've been through a couple Mays before, that is graduations, 2000, 2004, 2006, 2008. I remember each of them fairly well. I think college graduation in May 2004 is the one that probably sticks with me the most. That was architecture school. I worked so hard. I pulled all-nighters multiple nights a week. So when it was over, graduation felt like a huge relief. I remember Tom Ridge, America's first Secretary of Homeland Security, was our speaker. I honestly don't remember what he said. But I do remember that he pointed to me and my friend David, who were maybe like three rows back. And we had constructed our mortar boards with these little flaps, it was architecture school, that popped up and they said, amen and hear, hear on them. And we would pop them up every time he had a laugh line. And, you know, we, would, uh, we eventually got his attention and he kind of pointed at us and waved. What he didn't know was on the backside we had pictures of his face. And it had little thought bubbles. And I can't remember what we wrote in the thought bubbles, but it got some laughs from the people behind us. I think someone on his detail must have seen that because I swear I had trouble getting through airport security for like eight years after that. So I'm taking you down memory lane with me because I'm keenly aware of the fact that neither you nor your spouse nor your mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or kids or siblings are here to hear my advice to you. Maybe the only people in this room that are here to hear me are my parents. Mom and dad, hey, how are you? Uh, but this tradition of a commencement speaker isn't just one, a mere formality of, that colleges must include in their graduation ceremonies. There isn't some college accreditation board somewhere that inspects commencement ceremony programs to make sure that some in, in dignitary has been invited to share a piece of advice. It's for this reason. If each one of us could go back and grab our younger, better looking, less wrinkly, less gray face, and say something, share some piece of advice, we would have a 19-point plan with PowerPoints. It would take an hour. We'd have visual aids. But I got good news for you. I've boiled my 19-point hour-long speech into about 10 minutes and one piece of advice and one wish. So here we go. I was maybe six years old when I received a gift from my grandparents, my mom and Papa Day. It was a Lego castle. Almost all of the pieces were the same shade of gray, and it certainly wasn't fancy like Legos today. There were no angled parts, no moving hinges, no, no, nothing fancy, no colors, no windows, no plastic, like clear plastic, nothing. Just rectangles and squares. And there were a couple flags and some stickers made to look like stones that you would put on the outside of the facade. You know, I grew up in the era of Nintendo and, and Atari and Yes, Legos and G.I. Joes and Micro Machines. Anybody remember Micro Machines? A couple people? Okay, good. I was born and raised right here in Salisbury in Wicomico County and went to Wicomico County Public Schools. And around the same time in my life as I got that set, I started, you know, experiencing some pretty remarkable teachers, namely those who taught TAD, the Thinking and Doing program. In that program, I learned about astronomy and Greek and Roman mythology, urban planning and architecture. And those teachers, and I remember it's Ms. Trivets and Ms. Bounds and Ms. Rowe, uh, they had an outsized impact on my reach and imagination. But after school, I still went back home and played with my Legos, my Lego castle. And over time, the stickers started to peel off and lose their stickiness. And the castle slowly broke down to its individual building blocks. And I'm certain that it didn't take long before I threw away the instructions. So what took its place was beginning to see those building blocks as little buildings, or little parts of a building. A stack of four might represent a four-story building. Pretty soon I was building and rebuilding little cities or, or famous skyscrapers like the Empire State Building and even the buildings of downtown Salisbury. Eventually, and I won't tell you when because it's later than I'd like to admit, 
I grew out of playing with gray Legos. But as years went by, the bug that I had caught, imagining building things, improving cities, it didn't go away. In the eighth grade at Bennett Middle School, which, by the way, used to be next to where Bennett High School is, I had a guy, Mr. Miles, who taught U.S. history. Mr. Miles was a first-year teacher, young guy, no nonsense. I liked history. I really did. But I could not help but fill my notebooks with doodles of cities and, and skylines. And around this time, I'd taken to carrying around an atlas, which, by the way, kids, is a uh, paper version of Google Maps. I, I would carry this atlas everywhere, and I'd fill it with sheets of notebook paper and listed cities ranked by population, a list that I would eventually go on to memorize. And I'd draw cities from what I thought were the principles of good city making from a 12-year-old's perspective. And it was this behavior that earned me a nickname, Map Man. I was looking at mom and dad to see if they would say it first. It also earned me a reputation with Mr. Miles that I wasn't really paying attention. So, so that plus that failure to pay attention plus the innate desire to entertain my classmates and make them laugh, which make, might make for becoming a good elected official, but did not make for a very good uh, student. It didn't sit well with this first year teacher. And in what might have been the most creative, dramatic and architectural punishment I've ever received, he built a wall of filing cabinets right down the center of the room. On one side, 20-some chairs, the chalkboard and overhead projector. On the other side, me. And it stayed like that for the rest of the semester. Look, I never stopped enjoying history, and it was, I was an okay student. In high school, I fared pretty well, and by my junior year, I knew that I was in love with architecture and cities. I began working for an architecture firm called Becker Morgan Group. In fact, I'll never forget my first day as a high school intern. That was also the day of the brand new college graduate marketing assistant who would go on to become the chair of the board of trustees of Warwick, Kim Gillis. The founders of that firm let me work closely with them. They were kind and they were generous with their time, but they were serious with their expectations. And I took on everything they would let me touch. So you've heard the rest. I went on to architecture school and served as national president of the American Institute of Architecture Students, urban design school, ran a nonprofit design center, city council president, mayor, secretary of housing, you can read the bio, I don't mean to yada yada it, but that's not important. One of the things I learned in architecture school, or refined, was the need to design and construct your product, your concept, whatever you're, you're making, whether it's a paper, <coughs> whether it's your pitch, you've gotta make it meaningful to the professor or to the jury or who is, whoever's evaluating your work. And every time I started a new job, one of those jobs I mentioned, every time I ran for an office, or undertook a new responsibility. I've done just that. I've built a plan and figured out how to pitch it. It's been something I believed in. But I'll tell you this, and you've heard it before. No plan survives first contact with the enemy. That's how they phrase it in Maneuver Captain's Career Course anyway. But put it another way, from warrior scholar Mike Tyson, no plan survives the first punch. So adaptation and resilience and flexibility, those are, those are watchwords that will get you through life. Something that took me a long time to realize, though, that even when I was the author of those plans, the plan for the capital of the Eastern Shore, or my plan for shelter for all Marylanders, my designs in architecture school, my papers in college, they were carefully crafted, neatly produced, highly fussed over, detailed plans, printed on their glossy paper. Each of those was like that set of instructions for the gray Lego castle. And you remember what I did with those instructions, right? I threw them away throw them in the trash. So if you're ready for it, here's my piece of advice. Don't fall in love with your ideas or your plans. Don't get me wrong. Be passionate. Be creative. Make grand plans. In the words of famed 19th century architect Daniel Burnham, make no little plans for they fail to stir men's blood and will themselves not come to fruition. His point makes for an important aside. If you wish to make things happen, whatever your wish may be, don't be timid in your vision. But to my point, falling in love with your ideas and your plans means you run the risk of not opening yourself to learning. For the plans you've made today and the perfect idea you have in this moment doesn't have the benefit of tomorrow's information. So remain humble, humble enough to grow at least marginally from your position of comfort in knowing what you know right now. So break down that Lego castle 
It ain't that pretty. The good Danes who created Lego are clever, but their instructions only show you a castle. But in that box, once I threw away the instructions, I also found the city of Salisbury. I found the Empire State Building. I found cities that had never been seen before by the human eye. And I learned that if I had never broken down the castle, if I'd never tossed away the glossy printed plan, the manual, I never would have learned a thing about cities or a thing about me. And there's one more risk to falling deeply in love with your ideas today. Not only will it stunt your willingness to learn new information, but it can stop you from believing that the rest of humanity has something to offer you. The gift of empathy will dull and fade the more you're certain you have nothing to learn from your fellow human beings. And in a world that's becoming increasingly chaotic with violence and anger and judgment and polarization, we could all use a significant dose of empathy. This world is beautiful because we each have something to teach each other. And thank you, thanks to all of our differences. So, I remain confident that my castle is good enough for today, but that it pales in comparison to whatever I can build in the future with what I'll learn tomorrow. And I hope that as you take this next memorable leap in your life's journey, that this small piece of advice is something that makes you pause the next time you're certain you know enough. Maybe you'll remember this just as well as I remember the content of Secretary Tom Ridge's speech. Or maybe the next time you see a set of Legos, maybe it's at a kid's birthday party, you'll think, throw away the instructions, kid. It's okay if you don't remember this speech or the metaphor I used to make the point or even who gave it. That's not my wish for you tonight. My wish for you, I hope you find the thing that will spark your interest and make you want to dive in so deep that you tear it apart, break it down, and it spawns the next interest and the next. That thing that will turn into your life's passion and take you on unimaginable journeys. And here's the really cool part. Chances are it's already in your life. It probably entered in childhood. You might not ever connect the dots, and if you don't, fear not. That's not what's important. The important part is that whether obvious or subtle, active or dormant, may you have your Legos. And may you have your Lego castle. And may you break it down into the many pieces that you will build into your brilliant future, which I know each and every one of you is going to have. Congratulations, graduates of Warwick class of 2023. I'm so proud to be here with you tonight. Don't go away. Right. On behalf of the class of 2023, I want to thank you for your inspirational message and your wonderful advice. And personally, I want to thank you for your generous comment. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice. So, what you don't know is that uh, Jake was running a little late today. Those of you who know him may know that that sometimes happens. Um, and we were in a, the ante room uh, with his dad, and I walked over and I said, you know, your son's a little late. Um, we've got four minutes, and if he's not here, I've got a copy of his speech on the stage somebody put up here, and I'm going to have you do it. And Randy says, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and I, two messages here. The first is, I would really like to hear what he had to say about Jake in high school and through his college experience. That's the first. But the second thing is, I said to Randy, I said, look, you raised him. You're going to step up here and uh, take care of this. Uh, Randy, Debbie, you did a tremendous job raising this young man. And we're very proud of him and of you for th this wonderful young man who gave that inspirational speech today. Now, Dr. Brian Newton, Vice President for Enrollment Management and Student Services, will introduce the class speaker. Good evening. Congratulations, class of 2023. This is an exciting time in your life, and I hope for all the best for you moving forward. 
The faculty and staff of Warwick Community College wish you great success in everything that you do. Please join me in giving them a round of applause on this very special night. I am pleased to introduce tonight's student speaker, Amber Bloomfield. Amber graduates tonight with an associate degree in criminal justice with high honors. She is also a member of our TRIO student support program. After graduating, Amber hopes to continue her education in forensic science studies. Like most of our students, Amber has experienced several challenges on her path to graduating. Her grit, determination, and perseverance are emblematic of the community college experience and the reason this evening is so special. It is my pleasure to introduce Ms. Amber Bloomfield. Good evening, Dr. Hoy, Dr. Mallory, Dr. Newton, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, administrators, graduates, and honored guests. My name is Amber Bloomfield, and I would like to start off by first giving thanks to God and to every professor, student, family member, and friend who made this day possible for each of us. I would like to give a special thanks to my mother, my two brothers, my grandmother, and my grandfather. I love you guys. My fellow graduates, what a journey this has been. Through all the sighs of exhaustion, the weight of expectations, the never-ending, wait, that's tomorrow, due dates, the fears that you can't do this, and if you're anything like me, some breakdowns and tears of frustration, something has happened, something big and completely life-changing. Take a good look around you, look at you, look within you. We have done it. <clears throat> we have accomplished something that, according to Pew Research Center, only 37.9% of Americans in 2021 were willing or able to accomplish. We are graduates. During my time here at Warwick Community College, I have learned many valuable lessons. I would like to share a few of those with you now. The first is that no matter who you are, no matter what your background is, the future is still up to you. There was a time when I didn't believe I could do or amount to anything. I was bounced around from foster home to foster home so many times that I lost count, never feeling like I belonged anywhere or to anyone. And I gradually began to completely shut myself off from the world around me. Then a bright light shone into my dark corner when my grandparents took my two brothers and I out of foster care and adopted us. My grandparents picked up on my love for learning and were quick to instill an overwhelming sense of love and confidence in me. They pushed me to engage more in the classroom as I tended to keep to myself, doing only what was expected of me and nothing more. They also compelled me to be more involved in extracurricular activities like after school and summer programs. In fact, it was in one of those very programs that I figured out exactly what I wanted to do with my life. It was a summer school program for A and B students centered around a single theme, crime scene investigation. I completely fell in love and it was then that my typical little girl dream of being a veterinarian was completely thrown out of the window. Previously, I would not have thought that college was a possibility, but with my new dream and my grandparents' encouragement, I explored the opportunity. In my time at Warwick, the staff and faculty were so encouraging and saw something in me that I did not give myself credit for. The bright smiles of the cafeteria workers and the warm greetings of the janitor janitorial staff were a daily encouragement, but my favorite experience was my criminal justice classes. The professors were people that actually worked throughout the criminal justice system so that each and every class was taught from personal experience rather than from just a textbook. They taught with such a contagious passion about their jobs that it made me infinitely more confident in my career choice and, more importantly, it assured me that my college choice could not have been better in any way. And as I stand in front of you today, this is proof to those around me 
and to myself that you can attain anything you set your mind to. Not only am I graduating today with my associate's degree in forensic science technology, but I have been accepted into Liberty University's online bachelor's program for crime scene investigation. The, circum the circumstances don't make the person, the person makes the circumstances. The second thing I wish to share is that not only can one overcome his or her background, but that perseverance is the key to achieving that goal. Perseverance is a word defined by a student's dictionary as the will to keep working until the job is done. However, I would like to share my own definition I have learned. Perseverance, it is the need to keep going on strength you didn't know you had. It is the need to finish that class project after a long, hard day at work because you know that higher education will ensure your children will have everything that you did not. It is the need to get an A on that research paper because you have to show anyone who ever doubted you that you know the word can't is not in your vocabulary. It is the need to pass that class because you know that impossible is just an excuse not to try. It is the personal need to graduate from college because you have to show your brothers that you know you can never be defined by the situations surrounding you. We have all persevered through good times and the bad times. When you walk this stage today, raise your head up high. Every single lecture, lesson, quiz, and exam has led to this very day of triumph. However, before I step away from this microphone, I want you to know that this isn't where your triumphs end nor your need for perseverance. This is a huge milestone in each of our lives, but sometimes the road might seem to be coming to an end when in reality we are just going around a bend. There's always something new right around the corner. May God bless our paths ahead. Congratulations, class of 2023. Amber, on behalf of the college and your fellow classmates, thank you for the address this evening. We also have a plaque for you commemorating this, your address to the 2023 graduating class. While Amber's returning to her seat, I'm going to take the liberty to make some comments that are not in the program. Uh, just based on the fact that this is my final graduation, you already heard that I'm retiring after 23 years of president at Warwick, and what are they going to do? Uh, and this is also 47 years as a community college educator for me. In fact, tonight actually marks the 50th time that I've sat on a commencement stage and had a rolling graduation. Being part of the celebration, thank you. It's a big deal, 50. In fact, I have my 50 cent piece to mark it. But being part of this celebration of your success and all those before you over these very many years has honestly been the most meaningful part of my job. Seeing up close the excitement and pride that each of you are feeling this evening and looking out and seeing the faces of your family and your friends as they share in your success is just so gratifying. The faculty and staff know exactly what I'm talking about because they feel it too. They feel it at every graduation. They feel it at every pinning ceremony. They see the fruits of their labor and the joyful, they joyfully share in your accomplishment. But I have to admit, since this is my last one, it's very special to me and I'm savoring it a little bit more. I know that your Warwick education has prepared you for whatever comes next. I'm a Maryland Community College graduate too. And frankly, I think it worked out pretty well. And I'm sure it will for you too. I'm proud of you, I'm proud of your achievement, and I wish you a successful career and a wonderful life. But I'm gonna hold my congratulations until it's official. And in order to make that happen, I invite Dr. Kristen Mallory, Vice President for Academic Affairs to the podium for confirmation of the certificates and degrees while Dr. Deirdre Johnson, Dean of Enrollment Management and Student Services announces the graduates.
President Hoy, the following candidates have satisfactorily completed their prescribed programs of study and the faculty recommends them for a certificate of proficiency. Certificate graduates, please stand. I have the honor of announcing the certificate graduates. Sebastiano Camarata, Certificate of Proficiency, Nursing. Maria Cristina Pernetta Kasahi. Certificate of Proficiency, Nursing with Distinction. <laughs> Vernika M. Cornish, Certificate of Proficiency, Nursing. <laughs> Shana Edwards, Certificate of Proficiency, Nursing. <laughs> Tamara Fletcher, Certificate of Proficiency, Nursing. <laughs> Donald Mason Kennedy, Certificate of Proficiency, Emergency Medical Services. <laughs> Robin L. Malcolm, Certificate of Proficiency, Nursing. Ebony Nichols, Certificate of Proficiency, Nursing. <laughs> Pamela Taylor Tru Pruitt, Certificate of Proficiency, Criminal Justice. <laughs> William P. Reed III, Certificate of Proficiency, Emergency Medical Services. Jaina Robinson, Certificate of Proficiency, Education. <laughs> Tayonia L. White, Certificate of Proficiency, Nursing. President Hoy, the following candidates have satisfactorily completed their prescri prescribed programs of study, and the faculty recommends them for an associate degree. Associate degree graduates, please stand as directed. I have the honor of announcing the associate degree graduates. Amber Nicole Bloomfield, Associate of Applied Science, Criminal Justice, with high honors. <laughs> Chloe Michelle Abresh, Associate of Applied Science, Radiologic Technology. <laughs> Caitlin Nicole Atkins, Associate of Arts in Teaching, Education. Connor Glenn Ains, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Maria Almagot, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Elizabeth Amadi, Associate of Applied Science, Physical Therapist Assistant. Ella Nicole Ames, Associate of Arts, General Studies with High Honors and Certificate of Proficiency, Hotel Motel Restaurant Management with Distinction. 
Kara Naomi Arnold, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Miranda Orlea Atkins, Associate of Science, Nursing with Honors. Tatum Christine Ayers, Associate of Arts in Teaching, Education. Madison Patricia Bean, Associate of Arts in Teaching, Education. Grace C. Beecham, Associate of Applied Science, Chemical Dependency Counseling, with high honors. Shelby Renee Beecham, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Christine E. Beebe, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Huli Berrios, Associate of Arts, Business with High Honors. <laughs> Evelyn Nicholas Beer, Associate of Applied Science, Physical Therapist Assistant with Honors. <laughs> Aaron Patrick Booker, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Daly E. Bosman, Associate of Applied Science, Chemical Dependency Counseling. <laughs> Alea Marnay Bratton, Associate of Science, Nursing. <laughs> Coretta Olandra Brown, Associate of Applied Science, Education with High Honors. Catherine P. Brown, Associate of Arts, General Studies. George W. Buckman IV, Associate of Science, Nursing. Amy L. Cannon, Associate of Science, Nursing. Deja Ashanta Chester, Associate of Arts, General Studies. <laughs> Nakia Colburn, Associate of Applied Science, Education. <laughs> Addison Page Cook, Associate of Arts, General Studies. <laughs> Mariah Leto Cullen, Associate of Arts in Teaching Education. <laughs> Tyler A. Davidson, Associate of Applied Science, Computer Studies with Honors. <laughs> Natalie Patricia Davis, Associate of Arts in Teaching Education with Honors. Darian Catherine Day, Associate of Applied Science, Chemical Dependency Counseling. Aaron Jacob Dupree, Associate of Arts, General Studies. James Dennis, Associate of Arts, General Studies with Honors. Dion C. Dixon, Associate of Arts in Teaching, Education. Jordan M. Durr, Associate of Arts, Business. Jean Duffy, Associate of Science, Nursing. Brighton Rebecca Edney, Associate of Applied Science, Chemical Dependency Counseling. <laughs> Mackenzie Ryan Elliott, Associate of Applied Science, Criminal Justice, High Honors 4.0. 
Sandra Elliott, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Will Thomas Elliott, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Sawyer G. Ellis Gall, Associate of Applied Science, Business, High Honors. Camille Unique Brissett Evans, Associate of Applied Science, Office Technology. Darice Ewell Wallace, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Kelly Facing, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Brittany H. Fleming, Associate of Science, STEM, with high honors. Michelle Francine, Associate of Science, Nursing. Jonathan Franklin, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Megan Grace Gandy, Associate of Arts, General Studies, with honors. Ebony Janaya Renee Giazanu, Associate of Arts, Business. Evan Mitchell Giordano, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Tricia L. Green, Associate of Applied Science, Business. Xander Anthony Hull, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Allison Handel, Associate Degree, Emergency, Me Emergency Medical Services. Christopher Connor Hatton, Associate of Applied Science, Physical Therapist Assistant. Caitlin Alicia Hernandez, Associate of Applied Science, Radiologic Technology. Uriah Nashaya Hill, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Khadijah Holland, Associate of Science, Nursing. Renisha L. Hopkins, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Lucy Claire Huntington, Associate of Applied Science, Criminal Justice. Samantha B. Hurley, Associate of Applied Science, Radiologic Technology. Karan A. Jackson, Sr., Associate of Arts, General Studies. Amber Jones, Associate of Arts, General Studies, with high honors. Heather Renee Jones, Associate of Science, Nursing. Rebecca McKay Jones Hockenmoth, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Renetta I. Jones Powell, Associate of Science, Nursing. Kareem Justi, Associate of Applied Science, Computer Studies. Olivia Jane Kinney, Associate of Arts, General Studies. <laughs> Eleanor G. Kesey, Associate of Applied Science, Physical Therapist Assistant. 
Hannah R. King, Associate of Arts in Teaching Education with high honors. Caroline Conziella, Associate of Applied Science, Chemical Dependency Counseling. Sierra Ashana Lewis, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Alexandria Lord, Associate of Science, Nursing, with high honors. Jaina A. Lyles, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Evan Thomas Marlowe, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Noah Hudson Mason, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Sonia McFarland, Associate of Science, Nursing. Wendy Mikulski, Associate of Science, Nursing. Tiara Miller, Associate of Science, Nursing. Jean Morales, Associate of Applied Science, Chemical Dependency Counseling. Hannah Fate Martin, Associate of Arts, General Studies. <laughs> Stephanie Mulberry, Associate of Arts, Education. <laughs> Timothy S. Moxie, Jr., Associate of Arts, General Studies. Cheyenne Presley, Associate of Applied Science, Chemical Dependency Counseling. Claudia May Raymond, Associate of Applied Science, Business. Macy Neesmith, Associate of Science, General Studies. Raylan N. Neesmith, Associate of Applied Science, Physical Therapist Assistant. Danielle I. Nestor, Associate of Applied Science, Radiologic Technology. Calvin Wynn, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Reginald Maurice Oliver, Associate of Applied Science, Chemical Dependency Counseling. Victoria Palazzo, Associate of Arts in Teaching Education. Jason Thomas Palmer, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Kiera Noel Parks, Associate of Applied Science, Chemical Dependency Counseling. <laughs> Kristen Sophia Parsons, Associate of Arts, General Studies, with high honors. <laughs> Tristan Robert Previs, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Machella Prochalski, Associate of Applied Science, Criminal Justice with High Honors, and Certificate of Proficiency, Criminal Justice with Distinction. Asher Pierre, Associate of Arts, Business.
Connor William Plumley, Associate of Arts, General Studies, with high honors, 4.0. Courtney Elizabeth Powell, Associate of Applied Science, Education, with high honors. Jaden David Rebuck, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Bethany Joy Smith, Associate of Applied Science, Business. Jasmine Alicia Turner Smith, Associate of Applied Science, Chemical Dependency Counseling. Jacola Renee Smith, Associate of Applied Science, Education, with high honors. Lauren C. Smith, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Sarah K. Smutney, Associate of Science, Nursing. Zachary Blake Salambrino, Associate of Arts, Business, with honors. Rhiannon Summers, Associate of Applied Science, Computer Studies. <laughs> Melissa Rice, Associate of Applied Science, Chemical Dependency Counseling. <laughs> Sarah May Reynolds, Associate of Science, STEM, with high honors. Andrew Rickers, Associate of Arts, Education. Palmira Sanchez Gomez, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Leslie A. Schaefer, Associate of Science, Nursing, and Certificate of Proficiency, Nursing. Madison Renee Savage, Associate of Applied Science, Emergency Medical Services. Jonah Self, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Charles A. Repsher, Associate of Applied Science, Physical Therapist Assistant. Sam Henry Angelot, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Verne Shaw Johnson, Associate of Arts, General Studies, with honors. Sangeeta Stillwall, Associate of Applied Science, Radiologic Technology. Anna Louise Smith, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Tyrone Dornell Stanley, Sr., Associate of Arts, General Studies. Emily Brooke Stightley, Associate of Arts, General Studies, with high honors. Cheyenne Jordan Stevenson, Associate of Arts, Nursing, and Certificate of Proficiency, Nursing. Latoya Townsend, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Jennifer Tremont, Associate of Arts, General Studies, with honors. Elena Michelle Traxel, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Spencer D. Twilley, Associate of Applied Science, Business. Hans Van Overeem IV, Associate of Applied Science, Chemical Dependency Counseling. 
Caitlin E. Vesey, Associate of Applied Science, Radiologic Technology. Chelsea E. Ward, Associate of Applied Science, Radiologic Technology. Shauna Michael Webb, Associate of Applied Science, Emergency Services. Megan Renee Webster, Associate of Science, Nursing with Honors. Paige Hannah Webster, Associate of Science, Nursing. Tori Rebecca Weems, Associate of Applied Science, Physical Therapist Assistant. Casey Lynn Wexel, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Savon A. Whittington, Associate of Arts in Teaching Education, with honors. Ashlyn Marie Wolf, Associate of Science, Nursing. Tyler Ford Wright, Associate of Applied Science, Physical Therapist Assistant, with honors. Chelsea N. Young, Associate of Applied Science, Physical Therapist Assistant. Caitlin E. Weitzel, Associate of Applied Science, Physical Therapist Assistant. Dustin L. Zeisberg, Associate of Science, Nursing. Zachary Tyler Smith, Associate of Arts, General Studies. Hunter Zimnock, Associate of Applied Science, Physical Therapist Assistant. Okay, would all the graduates please rise. For my final time, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Warwick Community College, I confer upon you the appropriate Certificate of Proficiency or Associate of Arts, Associate of Arts in Teaching, Associate of Science, or Associate of Applied Science degree, with all the rights and privileges thereunto appertaining. Congratulations, graduates. You can turn your tassels. Okay, I need to ask everybody to take your seat for just a couple minutes. I'd like to recognize and express our appreciation to those who have played a significant role in the success we're celebrating here tonight, and that's our faculty and staff. We're extremely fortunate to have such a talented, supportive, and committed team at Warwick Community College serving our students and this community. So please help me, join me in showing appreciation for all that they did and they do. And last but certainly not least, I'd like to thank the Board of Trustees, the members of our Eastern Shore delegation, the Wicomico County Council and Executive, and the Worcester County Commissioners. 
The leadership and friendship and support that these individuals provide are vital to our success as your community college. Thank you, special guests, graduates, families, and friends for sharing this evening's commencement ceremony. Please join us for a reception in the Midway Room, which is located down the hallway to my left, following the academic recession. For your comfort and convenience of our students, we ask that you please remain in your seats to allow all of our students and faculty to exit the arena so they can be available to greet you in the Midway Room. Somebody didn't hear me, obviously. Now, please rise for the benediction. Gracious and caring one, our source of light, we ask for your almighty presence to be upon these graduates as they are now sent forward from here to share their gifts and abilities. With your classes and grading all now completed, may you strive toward your next steps with all your newfound wisdom in all you do. When all of the applause here has quieted, may you still be able to celebrate and lift up those around you. After all of the speeches have concluded, may your voices rise up to pronounce peace and justice in the world. Once the fanfare ceases, may you find bliss in your future endeavors and adventures. And with your degrees and credentials in hand, may you always be thankful for the faculty and administration who have brought you to this point. Allow these achievements you have now attained to enrich you and your communities. We pray that you use all you have learned and experienced here at Warwick in the midst of life's blessings as well as in life's challenges. Though you may be leaving this campus, you will always be a part of the Warwick family. We know the bonds that have been created during this time you have studied here will remain strong despite any time or distance. As your next steps begin and your careers commence, may you be inspired from this day forward onward to go forth and set the world on fire. Amen. Amen.